God bless you. This is Bishop Bernita Jackson, and I am so grateful to be here on tonight in Bible study on the behalf of uh, Pastor John, who is the pastor of Triumphant Church. I say praise the Lord to everybody who is on the line on tonight. Grateful to be here, and also let me shout out to my brother, uh, Bishop Russell. We're glad to be with you on tonight. I want to share in the word of God with you something that the Lord uh, allowed me to experience uh, through the word on this week. Let's go, if you have your Bibles, to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. I, I, I want to talk about a little bit on tonight about why we suffer. A lot of us go through a lot of things and we don't have a clue as to why we're suffering. A lot of us don't like the suffering part when it comes to ministry. We don't like to deal with going through. We don't like to deal with trouble. We, don't, we want everything to be nice and lovely because we just think it ought to go that way. But I found out in the word of God that there's just some things in this life the scripture teaches us that we're going to suffer. And when I found out that in the word of God, I looked into the word of God in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. And 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 teaches us, and this is what I want to talk about, why we suffer. I want to talk about that tonight, why we suffer. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. It says, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that, listen to this, after that, ye have suffered a while. Listen to, this is why we suffer. He said, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen, and settle you. Let me read that one again. He said, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen, and settle you. When I read that verse and it jumped in my spirit, I began to just rejoice in the God of my salvation because I said, okay, God, this makes sense. Now I understand why I suffer the things that I'm suffering. You need to understand on tonight that there is a purpose. There is a reason why God will allow you to go through what you're going through. We live in a day and age where everybody is blaming everything on the enemy. Now, let me tell you, I'm not on here to advocate for the enemy. I don't like the enemy. I'm not rah-rahing the enemy. But I've come to learn as we mature in Christ that everything is not because of the enemy. There are some things that happen in our life. There are some things that we go through. Sometimes it's because of us. It's because of the choices that we make. And whatever choice we make, we have to understand that we must be willing to deal with the consequences of our choices and the consequences may come out good and or the consequences may cause us to have a little hardship and jesus promised us in this world he said he said that in this life we will suffer persecution but he told us in the scripture he said don't worry about it why because i have already overcome the world and when we know that when we're going through things that we're already overcomers, that gives us strength right there. That blesses us right there. But what helped me even more, because I know what you're saying, yeah, Bishop, it's easy to talk about going through until we start going through. And you are absolutely right. But when you understand what the word of God says about your suffering, Jesus tells us, uh, God tells us in scripture, I believe it's in Jeremiah 29 and 11. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, but he is, one. some of the versions says to give you 
or to bring you to an expected end. And so you have to know that God has a plan for your life. And since God has a plan for your life, when you start going through and suffering some things, look at what first Peter teaches us. When we start going through, he said, after you have suffered a while, the scripture teaches us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so same thing with this word. After we have suffered a while, how many know that trouble don't last always? After we have suffered a while, look at what our suffering does for us. Look at the what, 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 what benefits we have. That's what I want to say. Look at the benefit that we have in our suffering. He says, after we have suffered a while, he says, this is what our suffering does for us. It makes us perfect. Come on, somebody. It doesn't just make us perfect. I'm not talking about we being faultless and we being blameless and we not making mistakes because as long as we're in this human body, we're going to make mistakes. But he says here, he says, after you have suffered, your suffering is going to make you perfect, which means it's going to mature you. Can I talk to you a little bit longer? It's going to mature you. You will never know how mature you are in God and in Christ until you start suffering some things, until you start going through. When you start going through, I heard somebody said a long time ago, Dr. E.K. Bailey, who is no longer with us, he says, suffering is the believer's badge of identification. If you can suffer and still maintain your holiness, still maintain your godliness, still hold on to God's unchanging hand, what? That shows that we are maturing. That shows that we are being perfected in the things of God. He says here, Peter teaches us, he says, not only is it God's will to, per to perfect us, which means to mature us, but it is also his will to establish us. Glory to God. Some of us, most of us, all of us need to be established in some things. We need to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. We need a certainty about us in this kingdom walk. We need to know beyond the shadow of a doubt. I heard somebody said, I know in my Noah. We need to know in our Noah that God is working on our behalf. He says, I'm going to perfect you, which means to mature you. I'm going to establish you, which means I'm going to anchor you down where you need to be. So we're not tossed about with every wind and doctrine. We're not tossed about with everything that's going on. We're not being, we're not falling out of the race because things didn't go well for us on today. We're not hanging up our hat in ministry and hanging up our hat in church because somebody said something to us or looked at us the wrong way. Come on, somebody. We, God wants to establish us. I hear somebody said online, that's right. I need to be established. We need to be established in the things of God. He says, look, I'm not only going to mature you in this thing, and that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be matured. He wants us to grow up. He didn't save us so that we can be babes in Christ forever, but he wants us to be uh, adults in him. He wants us to be mature in him. He wants us to grow up on him. He wants us to get to the point where we're no longer just drinking uh, off the milk, but he wants us to get to the point where we are now knowing that we've been in Christ for a time, can now eat the meat of the word. I don't know about you, but as a little bit of baby, I didn't mind drinking milk, but I don't drink too much milk now. Now I'm on to the meat, hallelujah, in the natural. And so, and as it is in the natural, 
so it is in the spirit. And as it is in the spirit, so it is in the natural. God wants us to get to the point where we're no longer just drinking the milk of the word, but we're also eating the meat of the word. He says, I want to perfect you and I want to establish you. And here's a good one right here. He says, then I want to strengthen you. That's where, that's where the word comes in, says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he'll do what? Strengthen our heart. He wants to give us some muscle. I knew a while back, uh, Pastor John was teaching a series about how fit we are in the kingdom of God. I'm just paraphrasing. I don't know what he called it, but I know he talked about being fit. And so when we talk about being fit in God, we have to understand that God wants to strengthen us. And in order for us to be strengthened, we have to work our spiritual muscle. Our spiritual muscles must be worked out. Can I talk to you on tonight? We got to lift up the weights, amen, in our spiritual muscle, the weights, the weights. I know the scripture tells us that we ought to lay aside every weight and sin, but there are some things in this ministry, some things in this life, some things in our walk that we're going to have to carry. There are some things that we're going to have to deal with. That's right, uh, uh, Bishop. We want to be mature and we want to be adults. He said, I want to strengthen you in some things, in some areas, because sometimes if we're not strengthened, when we, when, when, when trouble comes our way, we fall out. Why? Because we cannot handle, help us tonight, God, the pressure of the test or the trial that we're going through at that time. And so we fall out of the race. I see you, Gatlin, because we cannot handle the pressure. But God wants us to get to the point where we can handle the pressure of what we're going through. I've come to find out that when we're putting something into the pressure cooker, that it comes out much better. It comes out with much more flavor. It comes out much more tender, but it has to go through the pressure. As it is on earth, so it is in heaven. As it is in heaven, so it is on earth. So there's some things that we understand here on tonight. He says he wants to perfect us. He wants to establish us. He wants to strengthen us. And look at the last part right here. He wants to settle us. Oh, I feel God on this one right here because that's what I want God to do for my life. Settle me, Lord, so that I'm not anxious. The Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplications to let our requests be made known unto God and the peace of God. He's going to keep our hearts and our minds through him, but he wants to settle us on tonight, church. Settle us so we're not giving up. Settle us so we're not throwing in the towel. Settle us so we're not quitting and say forgetting about it and walking away. Settle us. And can I, can I go back to that? So we're not walking away. A lot of times, many of us, we will call ourselves walking away from the church, but we're not really walking away so much from the church. We're walking away from God. So we got to be careful that even in our test and our trials that we're going through, that we are not walking away from our savior. We got to make sure that we're not walking away from our healer, our way maker. I often wonder sometimes, why is it that when everything is going good, we're in the church praising God. And when we're going through trouble, we stay home. That's the trick of the enemy. Come on, somebody. The enemy wants us to stay home. Why? So that we can't be perfect. He wants us to stay home so we can't be established. He wants us to stay away from the church so that we can't be strengthened. He wants us to stay away so that we're not settled because the word of God settles us. Hallelujah. The word of God strengthens us. It's the word of God that perfects us. It's the word of God that establishes us. Hallelujah. And where do we hear the word? In the presence of 
the Lord, hallelujah, in the sanctuary of the most high, we hear the word of the Lord. And can I tell you something else about this word on tonight? that God wants to do for us. He wants to do so many great things for us. But can I tell you that God also wants to give us a little bit more? Look at what verse 11 says in the same chapter. Verse 11 says, once God has perfected us, once God has allowed us to be established, once God has strengthened us, once God has settled us, look at what the, the word of God says. It says in the 11th verse, to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Oh, let me help you on tonight. It says to him, look at that name, him. It's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about us. Can I teach you on tonight that God wants to bring glory even to you, that God wants you to have dominion over some things. We live in a society. I was talking to my mentor and we was dealing with this scripture and, I, and, and, and he said, we're living in a society where everything is downloaded. We're living in, in a society where, where you can download anything on your laptop, anything on your telephone, anything on your iPad. You can just download stuff. He says, Bishop, we're living in a season where God wants to download some stuff to us. Can I encourage you on tonight that God is going to make some things easy for you to obtain after you have suffered a while. He's going to make it easy for you to get some stuff. The enemy won't be able to block the things that God wants you to have. We're in a season where God is allowing things to be downloaded to us. Somebody ought to say download, 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 because that's the season we're living in where God is downloading some stuff. And he says to him, to who? To you. That, that H is a, is a small uh, H. If it was the large H, it would be talking about God. But it says to him, meaning to you, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Don't you know God wants us to reign as he reigns? He wants to establish us. God has, Jesus is already sitting on the right hand of the father. Jesus already has dominion. Somebody would say, well, Bishop, I don't know if you're talking right on that, but Jesus already has dominion. Am I talking right? He's already has all of the power. Am I talking right? He already has dominion and glory and power forever and ever. And there's things that God wants to put in us. He wants to give us dominion over some stuff so that we can walk in the authority that he has for us. Let me go further and give you a little bit more word on tonight. I, I see my time is almost up, but let me give you a little bit of more word on tonight. He says in Philippians chapter one, verse six, he says, being confident and that's what the Lord is doing on tonight. He said, we can be confident of this very thing that he would have begun a what? Good work. And when we're going through, we have to understand that God is doing a good work. We don't have to murmur, don't complain, don't kick, don't scream, don't holler, don't fall out, don't throw in the towel because God is doing a good work. And somebody may say, well, Bishop, I ain't there yet. I'm screaming, I'm hollering, I'm throwing in the towel. Even if you are screaming and hollering, just don't throw in the towel. How many know sometimes children just have fits, but we ain't leaving, hallelujah. We don't leave our parents just because we having a fit. Have your fit, get up, wash your face, get yourself back together and hang in there. Hang in there because we are confident that he that hath begun a good work in us, hallelujah, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And that's what God is doing with us. He is performing a good work in us. That's why we go through what we go through. I just wanted to come on tonight because it blew my mind. When we understand how God works and when we understand what the plan of God is and when we understand what God is doing, it, it, it helps us when trouble times come. 
Hallelujah. If I didn't understand what God was doing, I may want to give up. But when I know that God has a plan for my life, somebody ought to say he has a plan for my life. It's not according to what anybody else has said. You need to know for yourself that God has a plan for your life. I see you, Pastor John. That's right. Throw your fit, but hang in there. Can I talk to you on tonight? Have your little fit, have your tantrum, but hang in there. Hallelujah. We, I, I, I say it all the time to people that I come in contact with. They say to me, they say, you still preaching? You still pastoring? You still teaching? And I tell them feigning is not an option for me. Come on, somebody. I, I may I may have to fall sometimes. I may get upset sometimes. I may feel like giving up, but actually giving up is not an option for me. Why? Because God has a plan for my life. And I came on here tonight to let you know triumphant and to those who are also on the line that may be viewing us on tonight that God has a plan for for you. The scripture tells us like this, be not weary in well doing for in due season. Tell somebody it's almost my due season. In due season, you shall reap if you faint not. So feigning is not even an option for us. I don't care what we're going through. I don't care what we're dealing with. Feigning is not an option for us. Hallelujah. God has a plan for our life and he wants us to continue. Look at, look, at, look at what the word says. I got some scripture for you on tonight. Second Timothy 3 and 14 teaches us. He says, but continue thou in the things, in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. Oh my God. First, second Timothy 3 and 14. He says, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and have been assured of. And one thing that we've learned and we can be assured of is that the God that we serve is a God of deliverance. He's a way maker. He's a provider. Hallelujah. He's our strong tower. Somebody said he's our battle axe in the time of storm. Hallelujah. God is here for us. Hallelujah. The Bible says it, and I love the scripture, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. I came to let you know on tonight, triumphant, and those who are watching that don't, don't throw in the towel, don't get weary, don't, 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 don't be upset, don't act like you don't have a clue. When we look at first Peter 5 and 10, I'm encouraging you on tonight. I'm encouraging you on tonight when trouble come your way to hold close to first Peter five and 10, because it is going to help you to go through what you're going through in your time of trouble. And when we start going through stuff, we need to know how to hug the word of God for the Lord of God is a lamp unto our feet and is a light unto our pathway. We need to know how to hug the word of God and understand that all God wants to do with us, the reason why we're going through, the reason why we're suffering, as I hasten to close, the reason why we're dealing with so many things, hallelujah. Not only uh, are we putting ourselves in some stuff, and can I say this? We gotta make sure that we're not the cause of what we're going through. I know we wanna blame the enemy, but sometimes we're the cause of what we're going through. But when we know that we're going through for the sake of Christ, and when we know that we're going through some things and, and trouble has come our way and we didn't, didn't anything cause to come our way, God is just working in you. Why? He's working in you. Why? Because he wants to perfect you. That's the word tonight. He wants to perfect you. He wants to establish you. He wants to strengthen you. And he wants to settle you. Why? So that you can do what? Have the glory, dominion forever and ever so that you can reign with God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. God wants us to reign with him. As it is in heaven, so it is in the earth. Ah, and God is downloading some stuff to us on tonight. He's downloading some blessings. He's downloading some healings. He's downloading deliverance. He's downloading breakthrough. Whatever we need on tonight, I'm going to implore you as I get ready to pray, to pray. I'm going to implore you to put it in your heart and put it in your mind what you need from God on tonight. And I'm going to touch and agree with you in the name of Jesus that you will receive what you need. Some people may need healing. Some may need deliverance. Some may need a breakthrough. I'm not going into the material things because those are just material things. We can always get those, but we need to be established on the inside. We need to be perfected on the inside. We need to be strengthened on the inside. We need to be settled on the inside. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you on tonight for blessing me to have this opportunity to share with my brothers and sisters. I pray God that this word on tonight has strengthened them, has healed them, has delivered them, has made them free. I pray God that they have found the answer to their prayer on tonight as to why they're going through. And I pray God that this word, God will stay with them, God, for the days to come. I thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for breakthrough in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, tonight is our $10 Tuesday night. It's our $10 Tuesday night. And I'm learning so much from Bishop Russell, uh, Pastor Russell about giving. They say, they say that safe folk give. And I found out even on this weekend that we give to what we love. Amen. If this message has been a blessing to you, if you're blessed by being a part of this network, if you're blessed by being a part of Triumphant Church, I'm asking you to sow your seed of $10. Amen. It's on um, below how you can give, the ways that you can give is below. And so we're asking you to sow your $10 seed on tonight. And it is my prayer that the peace of God will be with you until we meet again. And remember 1 Peter 5 and 10, what God wants to do with us after we've suffered a, a little while, perfect us, establish us, strengthen us and settle us. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much.